Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my January Marked As To Read video. In the month of January, I marked a total of 27 books as to read on Goodreads, which is a nice number because 27 is in fact my favourite number. So that is a lot of books though, so I do have a lot to go through, so I'm going to try to go through these as quickly as possible. Well, let's jump straight in and talk about all of the books that I was inspired to mark as to read on Goodreads in January. The first book I want to talk about is The First Days by Rhiannon Freida. This is a book that um, Peter over at Peter Likes Books has recommended. It is the first book in a series. It is an adult post-apocalyptic sci-fi series that involves zombies. That, again, Peter has been raving about this book. The next book I want to talk about is The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. This is one that was actually on um, the Dimmick. So Dimmick's is a bookstore I'm an Australian bookstore and they had their list of, I think it was the top 101 books of 2017. That's not like released in 2017, but I think purchased in 2017. And this is an adult historical paranormal story following witches in 1880 New York. And that just sounds like a really fun book. Next, I have four books that were mentioned in a Goodreads blog post that was about 23 of the most highly anticipated books of 2018. So the first one that I um, saw from this list is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. Um, and what it said, I'm going to read you what it said on the blog post about this book. It said, what would you do if you knew the date of your death? In 1969, the four gold siblings think little of getting their fortunes told, but the prophecies haunt them, lingering over the next five decades as they each search for love, fulfillment, and longevity. And that just sounded really, really interesting to me. And so I marked that one as true read. There was then also The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. And again, I'm going to read you the little synopsis that it had on the blog post. Anna Fox has one lifeline to the real world, her window. Terrified to step outside her home, she spends her days watching her perfect neighbours until she witnesses something no one was supposed to see in this chilling Hitchcockian mystery. So again, I love thrillers. This is um, the fact that it was compared like talked about being Hitchcockian. I love Hitchcock movies. It obviously has a very like rear window feel to it. It also appears like it's going to deal with some like agoraphobia, mental health issues. So it just sounded really interesting. Next from that Goodreads blog post is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This is one that of course I had heard of, but I had never marked as true read up until that point. And I adore Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. And this is um, a book that follows a character from that book, which is Leah, obviously. And that's all I know about it. But I loved Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And so I definitely want to read this one as well. The final one that I marked as to read from that particular blog post was Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I had recently read Uprooted by Naomi Novik and I really, really enjoyed it. And the little blurb that it had um, on the blog post about this one said, Two years after enchanting readers with her Beauty and the Beast retelling, Novik is back with a dark take on the Rumpelstiltskin legend that follows Mi Miriam? I presume it's going to be pronounced Miriam, a clever young woman with a dangerous talent for turning silver into gold. That's all I know about it is that it's obviously a Rumpelstiltskin dark retelling and I really enjoyed her, like I said, uprooted, so I just want to check this one out as well. Next, I want to talk about To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This is one that I just heard a few people mentioning on BookTube, and when I looked it up on Goodreads, it seemed to have really um, positive early reviews as well. And this is, is a dark YA retelling of The Little Mermaid that involves sirens. Next, I have The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This one I first heard about when Mel over at That Girl Bookworm mentioned it to me. And then since then, I've seen a lot of people talking about it on BookTube. This is described as being hocus pocus and practical magic meets the Salem Witch Trials. If you know me, that is so on my alley. Hocus Pocus and Practical Magic are two of my favorite movies. I freaking love witch books. So this is obviously something that I want to check out. Next, we have a book that I heard Lauren over at Lauren and the Books talk about in her nonfiction November TBR, and that is Riverine, a memoir from anywhere but here by Angela Palm. And this is a memoir, obviously, and the main thing that I was intrigued about is that it seems to be about a girl who was in love with a boy when she was growing up, and I think she's moved away, and she moves back, and it's about, I think, 
dealing with the fact that this boy that she was in love with when she was a teenager is now in prison for a brutal murder. I think the memoir obviously is going to deal with some other stuff, but that is the main thing that intrigued me about this memoir and made me want to read it. Next we have the Victorian chaise lounge. I don't, is that the correct way to pronounce that word? I don't know. I probably just really embarrassed myself. It's by Marganita Lasky. This is one that Simon over at Savage Reads recommended. I'm not sure if this is technically a novella or a short story, but it's a very short story book or story about, and I believe it's a gothic short story about a woman who b buys this partic particular chaise lounge um, that when she sits on it, it sends her back in time, I think, to like where this particular chair, I'm just going to say chair, was in the past. So that just sounded really interesting and Simon was really recommending it and it just sounded like an interesting book. Next we have They All Fall Down by Roxanne St. Clair. This is one that I've wanted to read for a really long time and just realized I'd never marked as to read on Goodreads. This is a YA thriller that is about a bunch of girls who, so I think in their high school this list gets put out every year of like the hottest girls in the school and then this particular year all of the girls on this list are slowly being killed off. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. Next we have The Lies They Tell by Gillian French. This is one that I saw on Books and Lala's October bookmarked video. And this one is a, yeah, it's a YA mystery. I think it's a May 2018 release. This has got to do with that there was this particular fire at this house and four of the five family members of the house were all killed and I think the main character's father was the caretaker of the house so he's under a lot of scrutiny in the town and it's a little while after this tragedy took place and the main character is waitressing and there's this group of guys who continually sit in her section, one of which is the boy from the family that like survived the fire and she's just continuously drawn to this boy. That's all I know about it, but it sounds really interesting. Next we have The Rules by Nancy Holder. This is one that I saw Christina over at the Princess Gummy Bear mention on her channel. And this is a, again, a YA thriller that um, follows a party where there's a scavenger hunt and it follows multiple unreliable narrators. Next, I want to talk about Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado. This is one that Books and Lala talked about on her channel and really, really, she really, really loved it. It is a short story collection, and I think it's got some, like, fantasy, magical realism aspects to the short stories, but I believe that the main theme of the short stories is all to do with feminism in particular, and I think a lot of them have to do with rape culture, and rape culture is something that I, in particular, am very, very interested in, so Lala was just really raving about it, and it made me really want to read it. Next, I want to talk about two books that I saw on a Goodreads blog post about books hitting shelves in the next seven days. The first of those is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. For this one, I'm just going to read you a little bit of the synopsis of Goodreads. It says, You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she is obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who is about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle. Assume nothing. I'm not going to read you any more than that, but it just sounds like a really interesting thriller. And if you know me, you know I love thrillers. The second one from that Goodreads blog post is The English Wife by Lauren Willig. This is a historical mystery that is about, um, I believe it's a couple who are married and they buy this um, house. And then one night at this big party, the husband is found murdered and the wife is missing. And I think it's like his sister or someone who's related to the family trying to figure out what the heck happened. Next, I have four books that I got off another Goodreads blog post. This one was about the 40 hottest mysteries and thrillers of 2018. The first of those that I marked as to read is The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. This is one where there is a group of um, kids, I think a group of boys who communicate by leaving like chalk stick figures drawn around for each other. And then one day, one of the chalk stick figures leads them all to a dead body. And then I think it's years and years later when they all receive a chalk stick figure message in the mail. Next we have Give Me Your Hand by Megan Abbott. This one is a little bit interesting because I have read another book by Megan Abbott and I didn't love it. But every book that she comes out with, I'm always really intrigued in the synopsis. So I do want to give her another go, but I'm not sure that her writing is going to be for me. But this premise does sound really interesting. It's about two girls who become friends when they're teenagers, I believe. And then one reveals a secret to the other. And I think it ends up just like destroying their friendship. And then it's years and years later and they end up competing for the same like really prestigious job. 
this sounds really interesting to me because it's a thriller but it also deals with some really interesting friendship themes and I really do love friendship themes in books. Next we have The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This is a historical novel with well, it's a dual timelines, like part of it's historical, that deals with a boarding school that has some students that are either murdered or missing. That's all I really know, but it sounds like a lot of fun. And the final book from that article was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Riley Sager is, of course, the author of The Final Girls, which has gotten a lot of buzz in 2017, which I haven't read, but I do want to read as well. And this one is about a girl who is at a summer camp, and she's like friends with this group of girls and I think all of the group of girls except for her sneak out one night and then they never come back and then it's years and years later and the camp is being like revived and she is asked to be like the painting or art instructor for the camp and so she goes back to the camp but there's a lot of mysterious things going on at this new camp. Next we have a book that I heard about from Dylan the Reader 5 that is White Rabbit by Caleb Rurig. This is a YA like thriller again and this is about two boys who have recently broken up and they're talking to each other like I guess trying to resolve some issues one night at a party when one of them gets a call from I think it's his sister or his half sister um, asking her him to come help her and when they get there they discover her over her boyfriend's like murdered dead body but she swears that she didn't do it that just sounds so interesting Next we have The Best Day Ever by Kyra Rowder. This is one that I saw Lisa from Books and Smiles talk about on her channel. And this one is a thriller, surprise, surprise. Um, but all I know about it that I can gather about it is that it's about a couple who appear to have this like perfect marriage. Well, I think they believe they have this perfect marriage, but then they're going for this weekend away and they're on this like car trip together. And then maybe it starts to become that they don't have the perfect marriage. That's all I know about it, but it sounds really interesting and... Lisa recommended it. Next we have The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. This is one that Eva from over at Fred Weasley Died Laughing talked about on her channel and it just sounded really interesting. This is a historical gothic novel about a woman who I believe she's been recently widowed but she's pregnant and she goes to stay and I think it's her husband's like family home and there's these like wooden figures like in a locked room that are known as silent companions and then I think it just becomes really creepy and there's like some kind of ghost story going on that's all I really know but it sounded really gothic and creepy and that is definitely on my alley. Next I have two books that I discovered on a Goodreads blog post this one was about the most read books of the new 2018 reading challenge so I think they just looked at um, the books that have been flagged as read most during the month of January that people were contributing towards their reading challenges um, and so the first one I have of those is Pretty Girls Dancing by Kylie Brandt. This one sounds like your pretty typical thriller, like, synopsis that is about, I think a girl goes missing and then it's been a couple of years later and another girl goes missing under very similar circumstances and a cop is trying to discover what's happened in order to discover about the most recent missing girl. He's trying to solve what happened to the previous missing girl. It's a pretty typical thriller synopsis, but I do love thrillers. Next we have Tips for Living by Renee Shafransky. This is another thriller and this one is about a woman who is trying to move on with her life and like create a new life and I think she's moved away and then her ex-husband who she's like tried to, you know, escape from, like not escape from because I don't think he was abusive or anything but she's tried to move on with her life by leaving and he and his new wife move to a house nearby to hers and then one day her ex-husband and the new wife are found murdered and she can't remember that day or night that they were murdered. Again, sounds really up my alley. The final two books I have to talk about are from yet another Goodreads blog post. If this video has taught you nothing else, it's that if you don't read the Goodreads blog post, you really should because I get so many recommendations from the Goodreads blog post. This was just one of their books hitting shelves in the next seven days blog post. The first I have of those is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I'm not going to lie to you, the main thing that drew me in about this book was the title because it has the same title as a um, rom-com movie that starred Deborah Messing, which is a rom-com movie which I totally love and I think is totally underrated. And it has a similar premise to that movie, I think, that it's a like romantic type story about a, um, I think it's a guy ends up using this girl as like his fake girlfriend at a wedding and then I presume some kind of romance is going to ensue. Like I said, I really only marked this as to read because it has the same name as that movie. And the final book that I marked as to read in the month of January is Brave by Rose McGowan. So this is Rose McGowan's um, memoir and 
I find Rose McGowan to be a really interesting person. She grew up in a cult and she's obviously very heavily involved recently in the like Me Too movement and stuff on Twitter to do with all of the like rape culture and sexual assault issues that are going on in Hollywood at the moment. So this is going to be a very interesting memoir. I say I'm very interested to read it. I don't always agree with everything that Rose McGowan like comes out with and says, but she is definitely a very like prominent figure within that movement. And I do find her life really interesting. And so it's definitely a memoir that I would think I would enjoy checking out. So those are all of the books that I marked as to read in the month of January. I would love to chat in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or any book recommendations for me that you think I should mark as to read or any books you've been marking as to read. I would love to chat down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye guys!